I'm gonna go ahead and get started on getting the rest of this fuel system mounted up. Uh, I got a new uh, fuel pressure regulator from Radium. Uh, this one has four ports, actually it's got five ports on it. So I got a Bosch fuel pressure and temp sensor on here. Um, each rail will go return to the fuel pressure regulator and then it will return to the tank from this port here and this one's just blocked off because I won't need it. Uh, what's nice about this one, it doesn't have a fitting on the bottom. So you can mount it to a floor and all your lines just run parallel. But the way I'm gonna mount it is I'm gonna take this mount bracket off uh, and then just put some nut certs on the side of the engine bay and bolt it straight to the side. That way everything will come from the fuel rail right to the regulator and then continue on down to the fuel cell. Uh, various fittings left over from the last car. I have some old lines from the last car that I have the joyous task of pulling the fittings off of. It's never much fun to do. And a chunk of hard line that I will bend so I can snake the lines around some tight areas around the turbo inlet, the motor mount, the side of the motor. It's getting pretty tight over there, so I want to do a hard line. That way I can secure it in place and I don't have to worry about lines flexing, hitting the uh, accessory belt, and so on. But So let's go ahead and get started with mounting the fuel pressure regulator. <clears throat> the first thing that I need to do is notch this flange a little bit because I want to mount it somewhere over in this area here by just putting nut certs on the side so I can just bolt it directly to the side of the apron here. But as you can see, it hits this flange. So I'm gonna cut a circular notch out for this to sink right next to it like that so I can get it as far out of the way as possible. And you can see how these two fittings here will be nice for the fuel lines to come off the two rails I'll have here, just straight into it and then return down to the tank. So let's go ahead and get started doing some work. So first thing I'm gonna do is take some tape and tape this edge in a pretty large area. That way I can mark where I need to make my cut. I'm gonna take this bracket off also. So you can see it's just two holes that go all the way through to mount it. So I'll just put some nut certs in here and take these long bolts and just bolt it straight to the side of the engine bay. So uh, I got an old hose that I'm going to screw on here to kind of mock up where the return line is going to be. That'll help me position this. So I'm going to use this old hose as basically kind of a mock-up return line. So I'm gonna screw it on here and it's gonna run just underneath the turbo inlet pipe. So having this here will allow me to mock up where along the edge here I need to mount it in order for the line to flow easily where it needs to go. And then here on the tape, I can mark where I need to notch. I have a pen that works. Right there. So now I'll measure the diameter of this circle. Probably find a hole saw that's close set it on there and then trace around it. And also I noticed that this vacuum reference uh, is pointing in a direction that's not ideal. So I'm gonna take these five screws out and clock this cap. So the vacuum port's probably coming out this way here and then bolt it back down. That way when it's in place, my vacuum line will be going straight towards the manifold instead of towards the strut tower.
feel the spring tension. But here's the inside. It's the spring, the diaphragm. So nothing to stop me from rotating this around, say, there. And screwing it back down. There. So now, when we get it mounted, our vacuum reference is going to be pointed right where we need it to. We're going to be right here. We're pointed right at the intake manifold. So now we can get this marked, start cutting, and sink our mount or our nut certs. So I grabbed this socket. It's a one-inch socket, and it's pretty much the same diameter. So I'm just gonna use it as a template to mark our cut. All right, so now that we got this clearanced out, it's a nice even radius around it, and the camera's falling. So now that we have this clearanced out, this will bolt straight to the side here, and we get a nice even radius around it so it looks nice. And later on, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some leftover paint and touch up these bare metal areas. But how I'm gonna mark my holes, so I have this um, quarter inch diameter transfer punch that'll go right in the mount hole here and center punch the hole onto the side of the engine bay here. So we have a nice mark right here we can drill for our nut sir. Now with that bolt tight, we can kind of pivot it to the angle that we want, which is the top in line with this flange here. And then grab our transfer punch in this hole. and remove it and we'll have the perfect location for the second nut zerk.
So now that we have the regulator mounted, I can do the return line from this port to go down underneath the inlet pipe, across the frame rail, and then down the hole where the factory lines went to underneath the car where the hard line ends from the fuel cell. So I'll just have a straight fitting under the car and I'll snake its way up and I'll have a 90 degree fitting here. So this is how the fitting comes. This is the hose. I already went ahead and cleaned up the cut around the edge so it's nice and straight. There's no frays hanging off, making it difficult to get the fitting on. You're just gonna unscrew the two halves. You need to press this around the hose and sink it all the way down. So, I just want to look in there and see the edge of the hose is at the base of the threads. And then this just threads in and it presses the hose out against the inside of this nut here. And this threads inside the hose to seal it and provide the fluid path. So you can get it started by hand pretty easy, but once it starts threading into the hose, it gets tough. So I just like to put it in the, the vise here and then just use a wrench to tighten it down. Now the anodized aluminum finish is really easy to damage. So if you put a rag in here or better yet, if you can find some aluminum jaws, um, that'll keep it from um, gnarring up the anodizing on the fitting. So originally I bent up these hard lines to go from about here on the car all the way up to the engine bay. But the hard lines I couldn't run through the frame rail and I couldn't figure out a way to run the fuel lines on the side of the frame rail up around the turbo, the motor mount, the boost pipe, the belt, there's just no easy way to do it. So I went ahead and switched to the soft line. That way I can run it through the frame rail, like factory, underneath the inlet pipe. And then I'll have a 90 degree fitting right here on the pressure regulator. So, get to the car. So these are the lines that come through the floor from the fuel cell, travel along the frame rail. You got a fuel filter for the supply and the return right next to it. And then it comes under the rear seat area and then ends. So the fitting they just put on, I screwed to the end of the return hard line and it runs along the floor and then into the frame rail here. I'll do the same thing with the feed line also. Run it up next to this one through here underneath and it'll probably end somewhere around in this area here. Alright guys, so here's where we're at with the fuel lines now. Uh, I got the return from the primary rail to the regulator done and from the regulator all the way down to the fuel cell. This is gonna to go to the secondary rail, but I can't <coughs> finish that until I have the intake manifold completed in here, because I need the fuel rail to finish that. Um, and I got the feed line from the fuel cell ran up to here. Um, 
I got a chunk of hard line that I want to bend to route around all of this stuff. And that's going to come into here uh, to a Y block somewhere in here and then split into two dash sixes that'll feed this far side of each rail. So uh, writing down a, a list of uh, fittings and parts that I need to order to move forward with that. So in the meantime, I've kind of been tinkering around with the inside, um, getting some of the wiring kind of all set in place and kind of do a test run and see how it all works out.